Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just about one o'clock in Honolulu, seven o'clock in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday, as we say on the islands, March 16th, 2018. And this is the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. Precious metals ends on a low note under pressure for the better part of a week, closing today off by about $3.90 at 131390. Collectively, this week had resulted in a drawdown now the fourth consecutive week. Silver down about eight cents at 1634, and that is with a fractionally higher US dollar up 0 0.06 points at 89.75. The Dow trying to close above 25,000, unsuccessful but close, 24,946 up about 72 points. NASDAQ fractionally higher, and the S&P up a few points. Lastly, the Bitcoin futures in terms of Chicago Board of Trade and Chicago Mercantile Exchange, gaining about $300 in today's trading, $8,600 and $8,520 in both exchanges. Traders, we do have gold trading under pressure today, currently off by about $3.90, fixed at $13.90. That, of course, is basis most active April's futures contract. We're looking at a daily chart. We can clearly see that over this last week, the only day in which gold actually closed higher was Tuesday of this week and that is this green candle here. However, following that, Wednesday did contain a higher high, but it found some ultimate resistance at gold's current 50-day moving average, which resides roughly at 13.33. That has proved, at least over this last week, to be insurmountable resistance in gold pricing. More importantly, what this does in terms of a big picture is first, it definitely creates a short-term double top in the market, two occurrences in which gold traded above 1360, then from that price point tracked lower, but it also is significant when we look at our weekly charts. On the weekly chart, we can clearly see that we have now had four consecutive weeks in which gold has closed lower. And although we cannot say that over the last four weeks we have had consistent lower closes from the prior week, because this particular week with our doji closed within the trading range of the prior week, we can see that other than that, we have had this market trading under pressure, moving to lower pricing over the last four weeks of trading. Now, what is also important is the lows that were achieved during this time period came to the lowest point, which was about 1303, that occurred three weeks ago, and since that, we have seen this particular price point hold, and this is a 50% retracement. And of course, it is a retracement from this large data set of the rally, which occurred at the end of last year, beginning of this year, taking the market from 1240 to 1365. Another interesting facet is that on a short-term basis, we see a double top. However, this has been a price point that has proved to be a critical area that gold has not been able to break or trade above ever since the long multi-year correction concluded. We are currently looking at a weekly chart which goes back to the all-time record high in which gold traded just above 1900. When we look at the multi-year correction that followed, we can see that we had a series of highs and then a sell-off. And if we take a look at the highs and then compare it to the following high, we definitely get a lower high. We also look at the lows and get a lower low. That occurrence would really be the overall characteristic in the market until the market hit these lows at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, in which the market traded to as low as $1,040 per ounce. From there, we had a tremendous rally in 2016, and what is most important is that for the first time since the multi-year correction, gold actually traded to a higher high than the previous high, which is what made this particular rally, and more importantly, gold trading above 1360 so significant. That would turn out to be the highest high that gold traded to since the conclusion of the multi-year correction. However, what followed was just as interesting. We did get a series of higher lows. However, 
On each rally, we also seem to top out at that price point. The occurrence of gold prices failing to trade above 1370 is absolutely significant. And unless we are able to take this price point out, we have to define current action in gold as an ascending bottom and a flat top. Therefore, traders, we remain neutral to bearish in terms of our short-term forecast for gold. We are still bullish long-term. However, the caveat with our long-term call is that we must see gold close above the incredible resistance seen at 1360. In terms of relative support, right now we believe that 1302 is a critical area that if held could be a pivot point in which we will see a conclusion to this correction. However, if gold trades and closes below 1302, we would have to update our target to the 61.8% retracement area found at 1287. Our forecast for silver remains neutral to bearish. However, there are some key distinctions between gold and silver pricing. The first thing is we do have an ascending bottom in both gold as well as silver, but we also have a declining top in silver in which we can create a compression triangle. Therefore, the key in terms of future pricing in silver is how it will react once we get to the apex of this compression triangle and witness some sort of release of energy. And finally, I do want to take a look at Bitcoin, this being Bitcoin futures from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange's five Bitcoin futures contract. Although the overall sentiment for Bitcoin has been bearish since March 5th, when we reached a double top at approximately 11,500, concerns over regulatory pressure by both the SEC as well as the Senate seem to have subsided and we have seen Bitcoin futures find some tentative support at about 7700 and we see that Bitcoin closed about $300 higher today at 8520 The close is also well above the 61.8% retracement level from 6000 up to about 11000 My short-term forecast is if we see prices stay above 8200 we should see higher pricing over the next two weeks. Traders, the one thing that we can derive from this week's downside pressure in gold is that after reaching a top of approximately 1364 weeks ago, we could easily see how that top matched up with a recent top. And in fact, we now have a quadruple top the highest point that gold has traded to since coming down from a multi-year correction. Traders, that is significant. We have a flat top and an ascending bottom, and we need to see gold break above these recent highs at 1360, which at this point is a very, very strong level of resistance. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.